Welcome to the Shadow Bear Story Sessions. We're keeping it rolling right on through Grimm's Fairy Tales. This is a show, a podcast, a YouTube show about dark, brutal, insanely, ridiculously hilarious, just often morbid folk tales and fairy tales. That's what we do here. And so, today, we're continuing our journey through Grimm's Fairy Tales, the original versions, not those prettied up, nice and smoothed over, family-friendly versions. Nah, we're getting real with it, we're getting dark with it. (laughs) The original versions. And on today's episode, we're tackling the original version. I don't know if there's a version beyond this original version. The Three Sisters. This is a long one. Folks, so settle in, because I'm going through it. This is longer than maybe any one I've done up until this point, but I'm not stopping. No. Can't stop me. Can't stop. Won't stop. These folk tales and fairy tales need to be told. The people need to know how ridiculous and insane this business is. So let's get started. The Three Sisters, we... Begin. Once upon a time, there was a rich king who was so rich that he believed his wealth would last forever. Setting up a fool here. Therefore, he wallowed in luxury and gambled on a golden board with silver dice. Wallowing in luxury. That's an interesting phrase there. I like that. Makes it seem like he's not particularly happy about it. It's just what he does. All this continued for some time until he squandered his wealth and was forced to mortgage his cities and castles one after the other. Okay, didn't know kings could do that, but yeah, I guess I guess so. Finally, nothing was left except an old castle in the forest. He moved there with his queen and three daughters, and their lives were miserable. They had only potatoes to eat for their daily meal. Well, how is he so broke if he sold off all of his cities and castles? Those are presumably very valuable things. He could sell off all this stuff and just live in a awesome forest castle. Live like a king there. He's not a real king anymore, but he's a king of that castle. Did he was he just in like insane debt? Maybe that's what happened the only way to explain this but in any event he's there in a forest with his queen and three daughters just eating potatoes once a day pretty bleak if i'm one of those daughters i am out of there we continue one day the king decided to go hunting to see if he could perhaps shoot a hare he never tried before after filling his pocket full of potatoes (laughs) that's all they had he went off to a nearby forest that nobody dared enter Because terrible stories had been told about what one might encounter there, such as bears that ate people, eagles that hacked out eyes, and wolves, lions, and all kinds of cruel beasts. Yeah, this sounds like a brutal forest to live in. However, the king was not in the least afraid, and went straight into the forest. Well, if we have anything to go by, if we know anything about this king, is that he is his terrible judgment. So... His confidence, much like it it was about his wealth, is entirely misplaced and unearned. We continue. However, at first, he didn't see anything except huge and mighty trees, and everything was quiet beneath them. After he had walked around for a while, he became hungry and sat down underneath a tree to eat his potatoes. All of a sudden, a bear came out of a thicket, trotted straight toward him, and growled. How dare you sit under my honey tree? You'll pay for this. So not just bears. Talking bears is, I guess, what we're dealing with here. The king was horrified and handed the bear his potatoes to appease him. I don't think bears like potatoes, like, at all. Then again, they, they're they omnivores, right? They like berries and stuff, so... Who knows? Maybe they do like a potato. But the bear began to speak and said, I don't want your potatoes. I guess not. 
I'm going to eat you yourself. But if you give me your oldest daughter, you can save yourself. If you do this, I'll give you a hundred pounds of gold in the bargain. All right. One, how does this bear know about this guy's kids? Has this bear been staking out the castle? What's this bear plan? Also, how does he have a hundred pounds of gold? Bears aren't active in the economy. He has no use for that. This is obviously a man in a bear suit. I that's not act that's not real. That's just if I'm the king, it's like obviously this isn't a bear. This isn't behaving at all like a bear, principally because he's talking, and that's ridiculous. In any event, he's making he's trying to make a bargain, giving up his oldest daughter for a hundred pounds of gold. And uh folktale dads, if uh, you're a regular listener or viewer here, you know about folktail dads, and they are not good and all too eager to trade their daughters for pretty much whatever, sometimes even just directions out of the forest. So, uh, one guess as to how this goes. Since the king was afraid of being eaten, he said, You shall have her! Just let me go in peace. So yeah, this is just a, this isn't even like, he doesn't even, wait, he's fine with not even the the gold? He's like, no, just keep your gold, just let me go. That is, so he is a pure coward. It's not even like a, at this point it's just either him or his daughter, and he's like, yeah, take her, take, take, take my daughter. I have terrible judgment and completely ruined the lives of my family. Um, but I should still be around, so take the girl. We continue. The bear showed him the way out of the forest and growled after him. In a week's time, I'll come and fetch my bride. Why do they always do that? Why do they always wait a week? I think this is what happened with uh, with the uh, the original Beauty and the Beast as well. He's like, I'll be back in a week to get her. <laughs> like, You're there now. You showed him how to get back home. You're there now. Also, was he lost? It didn't say he was lost. He'd just been walking around for a while. Yeah, just take the girl now. I don't know why we have to have this arbitrary time timeline. As he went home, the king felt more at ease and was convinced that the bear would not be able to crawl through a keyhole. I mean, yeah, I guess, but he's still a bear. He could wait for you on the other side of the keyhole, king. This guy's so stupid. So from then on... Everything at the castle was to be shut tight. Well, then they're going to starve. This isn't a plan, guy. Come on. All you have is potatoes, and now you can't even go outside to get the potatoes. He ordered all the gates to be locked, the drawbridges to be lifted, and told his daughter not to worry. I would still be very worried. But just to be on the safe side and to protect his daughter from the bear bridegroom bridegroom so he's assuming this is a marriage situation i would definitely be assuming this is a he gonna eat her situation he gave her a little room under the pinnacle high up in the castle she was to hide there until the week was over well he's just gonna come back after he's gonna come back in a week don't hide there hide there in a week not for a week this is tech this guy understands nothing about the gravity of the situation or the mechanics of how this will work. This guy is bad at plans, which we already knew. He lost all of his castles and cities. You got to be really dumb to be so bad with money that you have to sell cities. Jesus. Early on the seventh morning, however, when everyone was still asleep, a splendid coach drawn by six horses came driving up to the castle. It was surrounded by numerous knights clad in gold, and as soon as the coach was in front, the drawbridges dropped down by themselves, and the locks sprung open without keys. The coach drove, I don't know why I'm talking like this, the coach drove into the courtyard, and a young handsome prince stepped out. When the king was wakened by the noise and looked out the window, he saw the prince had already fetched his oldest daughter from the locked room, and was lifting her into the coach. So she was just like, I'm not going to hide anymore. Is that 
what happened here? Because she knew that on the seventh day he's coming, or a bear is coming, and he's like, hide. She's like, well, that ain't a bear. He's got magic. Coach, I'm in. This could be either really good or really bad for this daughter. We'll find out. To be honest, good for her. Even if this is the bear, like, good for her. Why stay? Why stay? This is only getting worse. Roll the dice with a maybe bear prince. Who knows? Definitely better odds than sticking with this nothing of a king here. <laughs> so the king, he could just call after her. Farewell, my maiden dear. I see you're off to wed the bear. What was that? Is he heckling her? Yeah, she's off. For whatever, whatever this is, she's off. You don't have to worry about her anymore. You are a burden only. We continue. She waved to him with her little white handkerchief from the coach. And they sped off into the magic forest as if the coach were harnessed to the wind. The king felt very bad about having given his daughter to a bear. Is he, like at this point, it's kind of up in the air, right? About the bear situation. He saw the coach, this glorious, magical, wonderful coach, take his daughter away. And he's like, oh man, shouldn't have given her to that bear. Even though, clearly there's something else going on here. This king is an idiot, man. He was so sad that he and the queen wept for three days. But on the fourth day, after he had done enough weeping, he realized that he couldn't change what had happened and went down into the courtyard. I mean, he c- kind of could. Like, he could go after her. Just like figure out what's going on, right? You're not totally powerless here. There... Okay, so he went down to the courtyard. There he found a chest made out of smooth wood, which was very difficult to lift. Isn't this his house? I mean, you found a chest. Immediately, he remembered what the bear had promised him. Oh. So he was like, no, 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 I don't need the gold. But the bear was like, I'm going to just give you the gold anyway. Yeah, this king is such an idiot. He, uh... So he opened it and found a hundred pounds of glittering and glistening gold. When the king saw the gold, he felt consoled. All right, that's kind of an indictment on his character. He's like, oh, I gave my daughter away, but here's some money. I feel better now. Nah, you are still a dick. He reacquired his cities and kingdom. What? That's, That's all it took? One chest of gold? He must have sold him off for nothing. This king sucks. So he, so all it took was this one chest of gold, and he reacquired his entire kingdom. He shouldn't be the king. He should not be the king of this kingdom. <laughs> I feel this is a bad thing. This is only bad. This only lets him off the hook, if anything. Immediately step down and make anyone else in your family the monarch. That's what he should do. He reacquired his cities and kingdom and began leading his former life of luxury once more. Come on, man. What are you doing? Learn from your mistakes. What did I say? Let him off the hook. That's all this did. All this did was let him off the hook. Soon after, he was obliged to mortgage mortgage everything all over again. Of course. And he retreated to his castle in the forest and had nothing to eat but potatoes. Ugh. Buddy, you got, like, a gift from the gods in the form of a bear for selling your child. This is is bleak, and still you ruined it. So if you felt any guilt about the whole situation of selling your daughter, you'd want to do right and, like, do better this time and not have to sell more daughters, which is what I'm guessing is going to happen. And if I'm being honest, they're probably all better off. They're, they're essentially chained to a gambling addict at this point. 
not essentially, literally. That's literally what this is. This king is addicted to gambling, and his family is going to be sold one by one because of it. Man, this is... Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't know that that's going to happen. I just think it's going to happen, but we'll find out. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. So he's back at the castle eating potatoes, and I'll bet his daughters are staring daggers at this guy. <laughs> Yet the king still had a falcon. Okay, cool. And one day the king took it hunting with him and went out into the field to get something better to eat. The falcon soared high into the sky and flew in the direction of the dark magic forest, which the king no longer dared enter. I mean, it worked out last time. Right after the falcon flew into the woods, an eagle shot out and pursued the falcon, which returned to the king. He tried to fend off the eagle with his spear, but the eagle grabbed the spear and broke it like a reed. Then the eagle crushed the falcon with one claw. Aww. Poor falcon. And dug into the king's shoulder with the other. Eesh. Why have you disturbed my kingdom in the sky? The eagle cried out. Either you give me your second daughter for my wife, or you shall die. Yep. That's what's happening here. Also, they didn't... He's not disturbing any of these animals, though. I mean, again, I want to be clear. I'm on their side. The king is for sure the villain here. So I'm on everyone else's, literally everyone else's side in, in this matter. But uh, but he's not disturb. He didn't disturb the bear. He just sat by a tree. He didn't disturb the eagle. He just, like, was trying to get some food with his falcon. But all right. We continue. All right, the king said, you shall have my second daughter, but what will you give me for her? So he's pretty ready. He's like, he's very prepared to make this deal <laughs> this time. He's like, oh, okay, cool. You're another one of these? Yeah, sure. You can have her. Give me some gold, bruh. And sure enough, 200 pounds of gold, the eagle said. Two? The second daughter? Double the price? I feel pretty... I feel pretty shitty if I was if I was that first daughter. In seven weeks, I'll come to fetch her. Seven weeks? That's a long time. So he's given her, like, two months, basically? Like, I'll come back in two months. The, he's the king at this point. King probably just is itching to get back to the tables, get back to gambling. He's like, oh, man, it's seven weeks. Can you come sooner? Can you come, like, next week, please? I gotta get back to my life. Of luxury. Ugh. We continue. Then the eagle let him go and flew off into the forest. The king felt bad about having also sold his second daughter to a wild beast. <laughs> yeah, he should. And didn't dare tell her anything about it. Come on, man. Can you even tell her? I mean, he's basically telling her, like, hey, life's about to get way better for you. Six weeks passed, and in the seventh, the princess went out one day on the lawn in front of the castle to water the linseed. I don't even... What do you do with linseed? Do they make oil out of it? I don't know. I thought they just ate potatoes here, but they got linseed, so... Maybe this is her hobby. Maybe this is all she can do. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked on this linseed. I saw the word linseed, and immediately I'm like, what's going on there? We continue. All at once... A splendid parade of handsome knights came riding up, and at their head was the handsomest knight of all, who dismounted and cried out, Up you go, my maiden dear. Come wed the eagle. No need to fear. These animals are awesome. Like, these animals are great, right? They're, they're not, like, eating these daughters. They're like, welcome to your way better life. We're finally taking away from you, taking you away from this monster of a king who your dad is. If I was the queen, I'd be looking at these daughters like, hey, can I, like, get in on this? I'll come too. I don't need this guy. We continue. And before she could answer him, he had already lifted her onto his horse and raced off with her into the forest, flying like a bird. Farewell, farewell. The king and queen waited a long time for the princess to come back to the castle. <laughs> They're like, oh, man, she's really... Get involved with that linseed. Oh, she, you, oh, but you know, sweetie, she does love her linseed so much. <laughs> you know, 
you know, Linseed doing doing what she does with Linseed, which we all know what that is, right? We continue. But no matter how long they waited, she didn't return. Then the king finally revealed that he had promised her to an eagle when he had once been in trouble, and the eagle must have fetched her. <laughs> That's that must have been that conversation. He's like, Oh, you know what this probably is? Mm. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, another wild animal came, and uh, I got scared again. So, she lives with that wild animal now. Ugh, this queen must be so disappointed. She's like, you weak, weak man. After the king got over his sadness somewhat... <laughs> that's, that beginning to a sentence is, un, is amazing. He remembered the eagle's promise. He's like, oh yeah, there's gold now. Went down to the lawn and found two golden eggs, each weighing 100 pounds. Quote, money is a sign of piety, thought the king, and he dismissed all gloomy thoughts from his mind. So this king moves on real fast. He's an addict. He's a gambling addict. He doesn't care about his family. There's those bonds... Of family mean nothing to him. All he sees is his chance to get back to those gambling tables. He resumed his merrymaking once more and lived luxuriously until he ran through the 200 pounds of gold. All right, at this point, be like, I'm just going to keep, like, these, like anyone who goes to the casino or something, you just only take as much money as you're prepared to lose so he should only take as many cities and castles as he's prepared to lose and be like these are my safety cast cities my safety castles i don't touch these i only gamble with these cities uh so yeah he's back to potato then the king returned to the castle of forest and the last of the princesses had to boil the potatoes oh there's one left she is i'm she she's just licking it. they were all just waiting for him to lose all that money so they could go back to this place and finally get a chance to escape him again. We continue. The king didn't want to hunt any more hares in the forest or any more birds in the sky. Oh, if I were the daughter, I'd be like, no, go. You should totally get out there. Hunt anything, anything. Please go hunt something. Anger an animal. But he did desire to eat some fish. Mmm. Ooh, actually, yeah. I don't know if you want to be the daughter who's got to go to the fish kingdom. <laughs> that sounds that sounds not as fun as the other two. So the princess had to weave a net, which he took with him to a pond. He couldn't even weave his own net, man. Not far from the castle. Oh, it's close by. A small boat was there, and he got in and threw the net into the water. On his very first try, he got a bunch of beautiful flounders with red speckles. But when he went, to, when he wanted to row ashore with his catch, the boat wouldn't budge, and he couldn't get it to move, no matter how much he tried. All of a sudden, an enormous whale came puffing up to him and cried out, "Who said you could catch the subjects of my realm and take them away with you? This will cost you your life." As the whale said this. He opened his jaws as if he were going to swallow the king and the little boat as well. When the king saw his terrible jaws, I don't think whales really have terrible jaws. Actually, no, orcas do, don't they? I don't know. Getting caught up here. When the king saw his terrible jaws, he completely lost his courage and recalled that he had a third daughter. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I got one more. Spare my life, he cried out, and you shall have my third daughter. So he didn't even wait for the whale to ask this time. He's like, no, I got a daughter. You want my daughter? Oh, this guy. Piece of work. That's fine with me, roared the whale. <laughs> so the whale's not like stoked about it, but this is acceptable to him. I'll also give you something for her. I don't have gold. That's not good enough for me. But the floor of my sea is plastered with precious pearls. I'll give you three sacks full of them. In the seventh month, I'll come and fetch my bride. Seven months now. Yeesh. Also, again, the king isn't even demanding 
like a ransom. He's just like, please let me go. I don't need anything. Just take my daughter and let me live. Oh, God. So yeah, seven months. I guess he's a whale. He moves a little slower, right? But again, those seven months, this daughter is just like, oh, okay, I know he went out hunting. That means someone's coming. Then he dived down into the water while the king rode ashore and brought the flounders home. Yet when they were baked, he refused to eat any of them. And when he looked at his daughter, the only one left, and the most beautiful and loveliest of them all, he felt as if a thousand knives were cutting his heart. Did he really? Did he really? He gets over these emotional moments pretty quickly, historically speaking. Also, why do they always do that? Like the It's also the, the last one who's like, the best. It's like, you don't have to assign value <laughs> like that. Like, they're all your daughter's story. Story doesn't need to be like, and this one was the cool, like the coolest. She was the hottest one, so it like hurt the most. It's like, no, nah, come on. They're... It all stings, but... All right. Six months passed, and the queen and princess didn't know what was wrong with the king. I... You you should... You would know. You're the, you're the princess. You're like, oh, he's sad again. That means I'm going to get to go somewhere. For he didn't smile once during all that time. Oh, and he's a downer. So he's bringing nothing to the table at this point. In the seventh month, the princess was in the courtyard in front of a man-made well and drew a well. There's no, you know, whale coming out of a well, and drew a glass of water. Suddenly, a coach with six white horses and men clad entirely in silver came driving up. Up the well? What are you talking about? A prince stepped out of the coach, and he was more handsome than any other prince she had ever seen in her life. He asked her for a glass of water. <laughs> and when she handed it to him, he embraced her and lifted her into the coach. What was that? Why do you want a glass of water? Why was that part of it? <laughs> it was like, oh, you do have water. I guess they needed something to be like, this is the water one. Then they dove back through the gate, over the field, and toward the pond. Farewell, you maiden dear, you're bound to wed the whale down there. It's not a great rhyme. It's a pretty bad rhyme. That's the worst rhyme yet, I think. The queen stood at the window and watched the coach as it moved off in the distance. I guess that was the queen saying that one. She's the worst rapper of, of everyone so far. When she was unable to find her daughter, her heart was saddened. And she called her and looked for her everywhere, but the daughter was nowhere to be seen or heard. When the queen was certain the princess could not be found, she began to weep. And now the king revealed to her that a whale must have fetched their daughter, for he had been forced to promise their daughter to him. It's not surprising at this point, if you're the queen, be like, yeah, I, I guess. That's classic, classic you, husband. Indeed, that was the reason he had been so sad. The king wanted to comfort his wife and told her about the great treasure they would now get for the princess. However, the queen didn't want to hear anything about it and said her only child was more dear to her than all the treasures of the world. For real, though, this queen should definitely be the monarch. This king has shown time and time again. There's like, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice. It's fooled three times this guy has lost kingdom if you're the people if like the subjects of this kingdom what are you thinking like oh that guy he's like got into gambling debt and now he's not our king anymore ah oh, man well probably a good thing that he's not our king anymore if he had to sell us because of gambling and then like a year later you're like oh he's he's back he got it back that's weird okay well hope this works out this time and then a few months later he lost the kingdom again? Give me the kingdom. I'll be better. I'll be a better king than this guy. He only cares about one thing. He's gambling. And it's like, he's back again? As king? Who who the hell is this guy? I mean, I've never met the king. I'm just a lowly peasant. But 
What's even going on? All right, this time, he must... When you've lost a kingdom twice, you've clearly learned learned a lot. You know, you learn from your failures. You learn from mistakes. This is some pretty big mistakes. He's must finally have figured it out. Oh, my God, he lost the kingdom again. Like, how do you even plan for your future if, if you're part of this kingdom? Jesus. Well, all right. The queen, she's got her priorities straight, which is very sad because all of her children were given away. She saw this one, like, go off with the coach, though, so you got to figure. Well, whatever kingdom they're being taken to, because it's a prince. We know it's a prince. They say that they're princes when they show up. So presumably she's seeing, like, this daughter go off with a prince, knowing. It's like, all right, she's going somewhere, and odds are that prince or nobleman is a more stable environment and uh, provider than my husband, the king. That must be what she's thinking here. <laughs> we continue. During, that ti- during the time that the whale prince had carried off the princess, his servants had carried three tremendous sacks into the castle, which the king found at the door. When he opened them, he found they were full of big, beautiful, and precious pearls, just as large as the fattest peas imaginable. It's a weird way to describe them, right? The fattest peas? not very regal or noble or or impressive it kind of diminishes the majesty of these of these giant pearls if anything all of a sudden he was rich again and richer than he had ever been before he reacquired his cities and castles but this time he didn't resume his luxurious way of living instead he became quiet and thrifty Hey, buddy. There you go, my guy. You're learning. Whenever he thought about what had happened to his three dear daughters with the wild beasts, they're not wild beasts. They're much more reasonable than you so far, buddy. And that perhaps they had already been eaten up. He lost all zest for life. Why would he think that they were eaten? He saw them go away in literal carriages. Ugh. Well, good. Finally, he's acting right could have done this when you had one or two daughters left but uh better late than never meanwhile this this queen is going to be losing her mind we continue meanwhile the queen couldn't be consoled and wept more tears for her daughters than all of the pearls the whale had given them it's, uh, it's very poetic it's beautiful right there finally she became more calm and peaceful <laughs> like I was like, she settled down after a while, you know, ladies. They get they get real uh real uppity, but they'll they'll get over it. <laughs> and after some time, she was happy again, for she gave birth to a handsome baby boy. Oh no, you do not want to be one of this guy's kids. Since God had given them the child so unexpectedly, he was named Reynald the Miracle Child. All right. The boy grew big and strong, and the queen often told him about his three sisters who were being held prisoners by three beasts in the magic forest. So she, the king thinks that they were eaten. She doesn't think that they were eaten, but she thinks that they're being held prisoner. Why would, why would, why would they be doing that? Why would they be? Why would these beasts buy women to hold them prisoner? Just from the beast perspective, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know. We continue. When he turned sixteen, he demanded some armor and a sword from the king. And when he received all this, he decided to embark on an adventure. So he blessed his parents and set forth. This guy's sixteen. Was too young to be able to do anything on it on like an adventure you're pretty weak when you're 16 even if he like spent his whole life like training and getting real strong and jacked and skilled at like sword fighting and arrows and all that stuff 16 give it like five ten more years you know 26 maybe even that not ideal i feel like 30 is sort of like you got your you know you're like grown man strength coming in when you're like 30, 16, you're a child. 
This is, is he is a child. He is a little boy still. Doesn't know anything. We continue. He went straight towards the magic forest and had only one thing on his mind to search for his sisters. At first, he wandered around in the great forest for a long time. He wandered. So he went to the forest and just like looking around, visibly lost. It's just like, I don't know. I walked into this forest with a great sense of purpose, but I don't know what to do now, so I'll just go put one foot in front of the other. At first, he wandered around in the great forest for a long time without encountering a human being or a beast. But after three days, three days, he saw a young woman sitting in front of a cave and playing with a young bear cub while another very young one was lying on her lap. Hey. Did, uh... This this lady give birth to bear cubs? These bear cubs come out of this lady? I don't like... I don't like that idea. Hopefully she's like the nanny, you know? We continue. Reynald thought she must surely be his oldest sister, so he left his horse behind him and approached her. Dearest sister, he said, I'm your brother Reynald, and I've come to visit you. <laughs> Even if you're not a sister, which just seems like they're setting up that she's not, you'd be like, what? Who? I don't have a, I don't have a brother. You're a little boy. Get the hell out of here, man. I got bears to take care of. What are you doing? We continue. The princess looked at him, and since he resembled her father very strongly, she didn't doubt his words. So it is, sister. But she was frightened and said, Oh, dearest brother, hurry and run away as fast as you can if you value your life. When my husband, the bear, comes home and finds you here, he'll show you no mercy and will eat you up. Okay, that, that sounds like she did give birth to these bears. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing right now. Those are her, like, bear babies. I don't know if that's better or worse than if they were, like, half human, half bear hybrid monsters that beg for death <laughs> like this is i don't know if it's better or worse but in any event also she lives in a castle what happened to the coach and the magic like you know yeah the magic coach and the knights and all that stuff why is she in a cave why is she living in a cave that they had better situation than this still i don't know is she happy let's find out when the princess saw Oh no, we continue. But Reynald said, I'm not afraid, and I won't leave you until I know how you are and what things are like for you. Not the most eloquent, but he's 16, so I'll give him a break for that. When the princess saw that he was resolute, she led him into the dark cave that was like the dwelling of a bear. I mean, yeah. Oh, we got a siren going by. Sorry about that. Maybe it's the bear coming back. On one side he was on one side was a heap of leaves and hay, on which the old bear and his cubs slept, and on the other side was a magnificent bed with red covers trimmed with gold. That belonged to the princess. Okay. Kind of weird, but like I guess nice. I don't really know how to get a sense of what what the situation is here then. So it's like do they have luxury or do they not? Because you live in a cave, but you also have a, like, super, super nice bed. So what else do you have that's, like, super, super nice? There's a weird in-between. I don't know what this world is that this lady lives in. We continue. She told him to crawl under the bed and handed him something to eat. It didn't take long before the bear came home. I smell, I smell the flesh of a human being, he said, and wanted to stick his hand under the bed. But the princess cried out, Be quiet! Who would ever come here? I found a horse in the forest and ate it. He growled. 
Oh, no. It's the kid's Reynolds horse. Oh, come on. You ate the horse? So he growled, and his nose was still bloody from eating the horse. Where there's a horse, there's a man. And I smell him. That's not a thing. Where there's a horse, there's a man. That's for sure not a thing. I mean, okay, there was probably like a, uh, you know, a saddle and other stuff. So in this particular instance, fair assumption. Again, he wanted to look under the bed, but she gave him such a kick in the side that he did a somersault. Went back to his place, put his paw in his mouth and fell asleep. It's a little weird, right? Put a paw in his mouth and fell asleep. But also, good for you, princess. Pretty strong. You're kicking a literal bear so hard that he, like, got knocked off his feet and did a somersault. All right. Princess is pretty cool, right? She seems to be doing all right. I don't, I can't get it, can't really, again, like I said, I can't really get a sense of her quality of life here. Um, yeah, I don't know. We continue. Every seventh day, the bear was restored to his natural form. He became a handsome prince, his cave a splendid castle, the animals in the forest his servants. What? Every seventh day? So most of the time he's a bear, and then on Wednesdays they just ball out? It's like that's, that's her life? But she gets the bed all the time. That's the difference? <laughs> like, what? That's a good, that is a good, like, thought experiment. Like, would you rather, would you live with a bear in a cave for six days of the week if one day a week you could just, like, do whatever you wanted and the animals are your servants and you live in a castle? Animal servants is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Having, like, all of the animals of the forest once a week for a whole day. I would take this deal for sure. This sounds great. Sounds like a good life. Even though six days a week, you're just like hanging out in a cave with your like bear children. Do the bear children also become human children on the seventh day? We have to assume, right? It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool way to live. i am be honest. It was on such a day that he had fetched the princess. Okay, so it was that day that he went with the uh, the big carriage and stuff to pick up the princess. So I guess that's why these weird time limits are being enacted by uh, by the wild beasts. Um, yeah. There had been a glorious... Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I skipped ahead here. It, had been such, it was on such a day that he had fetched the princess. Beautiful young women had come to meet her from the castle. There had been a glorious festival. Oh, so there's other humans, too, that get transformed at the same time. There had been a glorious festival, and she had gone to sleep full of joy. But when she had awakened, she had found herself lying in the bear's dark cave. And her husband had been turned into a bear, growling at her feet. Only the bed and everything she had touched had remained in its natural condition. Well she touched and hadn't been changed what did she touch just the bed she must have touched a bunch of other stuff she must have touched a whole bunch of other stuff on that first day interesting though because it doesn't that's not clearly not the case for subsequent Wednesdays when she gets to ball out can't just like run around I'm sure that first time after that though she's just running around touching it everything trying to protect it from getting turned back into nothing or bear whatever thus she lived six days in suffering but on the seventh she was comforted she didn't grow old because only one day a week counted in her life and she was content with her existence so she's not even aging she ages for every week she ages a day 
this is a pretty decent life. Like, this is pretty cool, right? I love this magic system. I'm super into this. <laughs> She had given her husband two sons, who also became bears for six days and regained their human form on the seventh day. She stuffed their straw bed with the most delicious food all the time, including cake and fruit, and they lived off this food the entire week. Huh. Moreover, the bear obeyed her and did whatever she wanted. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. So, basically, anything she can shove in the bed... She gets to keep, and she used, she uses that bed portal to smuggle cakes and fruit <laughs> to to her kids, and then she can just like boss the bear around for those six days. This is pretty cool. I want like a sitcom of this situation. Bear, one day a week we go crazy. We continue. When Reynolds awoke, he lay in a silken bed. Servants waited on him and dressed him in the finest clothes, for his visit fell right on the seventh day. His sister entered with the two handsome princes and her brother-in-law, the bear. And his brother-in-law, the bear. Okay, I was about to be very confused for a second. His Reynolds brother-in-law, the bear. Who I guess is now must now be in the form of a prince. Or a king, I guess, whatever. They were glad about his arrival, Everything was magnificent and glorious, and the entire day was filled with pleasurable and joyous things. I mean, if I was Raynal, I'd be like, yo, you did eat my horse yesterday. <laughs> like, kind of kind of bummed about that, bro. The prince was like, ah, ha, ha. sorry, you know what I get like when I'm a bear. I don't. I just met you. This is really weird, and I'm adjusting. We continue. But in the evening, the princess said, Dear brother, now it's time for you to depart. At daybreak, my husband will become a bear again, and if he finds you here tomorrow, he won't be able to control his natural instincts and will eat you up. So I guess she tells him what to do, but can't control his, like, insatiable bloodlust. Or just hunger, blood hunger. I don't know what if that is equivalent to bloodlust. I don't know. The, then the bear prince came and gave him three bear hairs and said whenever you're in trouble just rub these hairs and i'll come to your aid that's dope that's awesome love that then they kissed each other all right and said farewell reynald climbed into a carriage drawn by six horses and drove off he went over a hill and valley, up and down mountains, through deserts and forests, shrubs and hedges, without stopping to rest until the sky began turning gray at dusk. Could have spent a little more time, right? Sounds like a long trip here. Spent a little more time, and then, like, when everyone goes to sleep, then you go. You can definitely get far enough away still that, uh, that bear wouldn't track you down when he when he woke up in any event he goes really far away on this magic carriage then reynolds suddenly lay on the ground and the horses and carriage disappeared at sunrise he saw six ants galloping away drawing a nutshell behind them i mean they're not going to get back home until a week it's just two years ants. They're just not going to get there. They're not going to get back to where they were. They live here now with Reynold. Reynold realized he was still in the magic forest. How? You went so far. You went through deserts and mountains and wanted to search for his second sister. So that just means they like circled back, right? If he's still in the magic forest, that means they crossed a bunch of mountains and deserts and forests and hills and valleys and then circled back around to end up still in back, and not still in the magic forest, back in the magic forest. Maybe the ants can get home then. Maybe that's what it was. The ants were like, all right, we left way too early, but we got to get home tomorrow, so we're going to end up close enough. Again, he wandered about aimlessly, 
and lonely for three days without accomplishing anything. That's literally what it says. That's the line. So this dude, Reynold, not great at anything. Not doing much. He's not a good knight. He's not like, it doesn't sound like he really has any skills. He just turned 16 and wandered into the forest. Ugh. Now he doesn't even have a horse. Just walking around. But on the fourth day... He heard a big eagle come swooping down to settle in a nest. Reynold hid in the bushes and waited for the eagle to fly away. After seven hours, it soared into the air again. It's a long time to wait. Then, but then again, he's been wandering around for days, so he's got time to burn. Then Reynald emerged from the bushes, went over to the tree, and cried out, Dearest sister, are you up there? If so, let me hear your voice. I'm Reynald, your brother, and I've come to visit you. <laughs> this kid, man. Uh, also, it's pretty easy to find these girls. because not the king and queen have done any of this? Then, he heard a voice calling down to him. If you're Reynald, my dearest brother, whom I've never seen, <laughs> come up to me. She's like... All right, if you're this person who I've never heard of and don't know about, I guess come up. I would be skeptical, to be honest though, if I was her, I'd be like, I don't I don't know anybody. I've been here for a long time. I don't know anybody named Reynold Rain, I've been here for at least 17 years, 16, 17 years. I say 17 cuz I'm allotting time for the queen's sadness and then subsequent pregnancy yeah so she's been there for a long time reynold wanted to climb the tree but the trunk was too thick and slippery yeah reynold is bad at stuff he tried three times in vain suddenly a silken rope ladder dropped down so again this is another story where just like everything is done for the protagonist don't actually accomplish anything. And he climbed it until he reached the eagle's nest, which was strong and secure, like a platform on a linden tree. Don't know what that is. Don't know what linseed is. Don't know what a linden tree is. Also, why didn't they just have him climb the tree? Why did they... Why did, was the story like, yeah, he was bad at that, so he needed to wait, and she threw a, down a silk rope. Where's she in a silk rope? Where's she in this rope? Maybe it's how she got down. Was this the was this the linseed girl? Was this the one who was doing that? Maybe that's why? Okay. If this was the linseed girl, all right, they're tying some threads together here. No pun intended. So that's uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like that. We continue. His sister sat under a canopy made out of rose-colored silk, and an eagle's egg was lying on her lap. She was keeping it warm in order to hatch it. They kissed each other uh, and rejoiced. But after a while, the princess said, Now hurry and see to it that you get out of here, dearest brother. If the eagle my husband sees you, he'll hack your eyes out and devour your heart, as he's already done with three of your servants who were looking for you in the forest. Uh. So three people found her before... <laughs> Before he did. <laughs> As a, it's kind of an indictment on him, right? In a little bit. I don't know. We continue. No, said Reynald. I'm staying here until your husband is transformed. So he's like, this must be the same situation as, as bear, bear brother-in-law. I'm just going to assume that. I guess. We continue. That will happen, but only in six weeks. If you can hold out that long, go hide in the tree. It's hollow on the inside, and I'll drop food down to you every day. All right. I'd be like, I'm not living in a tree for six weeks. I'm, I'm out of there. Also, that means that all of the servants who were killed just like waited she wasn't going to help them or like send them back 
they just like hung around or maybe she didn't care about them at all and just like let her husband <laughs> eat them <laughs> Yeesh. not really any solution to that question or answer to that question that isn't uh bleak yeah, but if I'm rain on, I'm like, all right, I'll see you later. I'm not living in a tree trunk for six weeks. Also, after six weeks, the bathroom situation down there is going to be uh, a nightmare. We continue. Randall crawled under the tree, and the princess let food down to him every day. Whenever the eagle flew away, he climbed up to her. Oh, okay, so he gets to, like, go hang out with her every day and then probably take care of bathroom times. After six weeks, the eagle was transformed, and once more, Reynold awoke in a bed that was like the one at his brother-in-law, the bear's place. It's the same thing. It's not... Yeah. Only here, it was more splendid, and he lived with the eagle prince in great joy. On the seventh evening, they said their farewells. So they get seven... So with the eagle prince, you get seven days in a row, but you gotta wait seven months for it. Yeah, that's not, it's a worse deal. It's for sure a worse deal. Yeah, I don't like that one nearly as much. I mean, also, just like, that equates to one day a month at that point, you know? Right? Oh, no, weeks. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. We're talking about weeks. So that does equate to the same then, right? Seven, yeah, six weeks to so seven weeks. So if it's... Seventh evening. Okay, so it's still one a week. It's still one day a week, one day per week. You just get them all at once after six weeks. <laughs> I don't know which is better. I feel like I'd prefer the one a week. I'd prefer the one a week. Six weeks is a long time. A month and a half for like a week. And you get you get used to anything, you know? By day five, you're taking it for granted a little bit of like being in super nice times, nice place. So, yeah, I'd for sure take bear situation. Also, I just prefer living in a cave to having to be in, like, a nest all day. Not as fun. And I'd rather hang out with bear cubs than uh, an egg or, like, a weird, like, giant bird baby. That sounds creepy. I don't like that. I want, like, a cuddly bear who like loves me and like wants to hang out and like play around that sounds way cooler and way cuter i'm really by the way i know i'm getting ahead of myself but i'm really excited for uh for under the sea lady we continue <laughs> uh seventh day they said their farewells the eagle gave him three eagle feathers and said if you're in trouble rub them and i'll come to your aid he's got some really dope hookups and like connections. It's a great networking event for uh for Reynolds here. <laughs> then he gave him servants to show him the way out of the forest. But when morning came, they suddenly disappeared, and Reynold was all alone on top of a high rocky cliff in a terrible wilderness. Why'd they leave him there? He looked around him, and in the distance he saw the reflection of a large lake, which glistened from the sun's rays. He thought of his third sister, who might be there. I mean, she could be in, like, any body of water. Wasn't it a pond that she, like... Like, like the the coach came out of the well, I remember. But then I think it said it took her into a pond. So, very unclear on uh, what body of water she resides in. But he's like, hey, maybe there. So he began to climb down the cliff. This is really this is a dick move of the servants to like take him to a cliff. It's like the worst place you could take him. He began to climb, climb down the cliff and work his way through the bushes and between the rocks. He needed three days to do this. Oh God, that's awful. And he often lost sight of the lake. This is miserable. But on the fourth day, he succeeded in getting there. Once he was on the bank, he called out, Dearest sister, if you're in the water, let me hear your voice. I'm Reynald, your brother, and I've come to visit you. This is the voice that I've chosen for Reynald. He's real, like, happy-go-lucky idiot. 
But no one answered, and everything was quiet. He threw breadcrumbs into the water. I feel like if you're like a underwater kingdom, you're like a fish prince. I feel like that's patronizing. That's like condescending. That's like kind of like a dick move to like have someone that like your brother-in-law like throw freaking breadcrumbs at you. It's like, hey, man, I'm good. I'm a king down here. You don't be throwing breadcrumbs at me. Don't worry about it. We continue. He threw breadcrumbs into the water and said to the fish, Dear fish, go to my sister and tell her that Reynald, the wonder child, is here and wants to see her. Wait, calling yourself Reynard the wonder child? Also, you're not Reynard the wonder child. You're Reynard the, Reynard the miracle child, buddy. Also, referring to yourself as Reynald the wonder child. Come on, come on, man. What are you doing? What are you doing, Reynald? But the red speckled flounders snapped up the bread and didn't listen to his words. Then he saw a little boat and immediately took off his armor. Oh, that must have been awful, climbing down that cliff with armor. He kept only his sword. I don't know why I said it like that. Only his sword in his hand as he jumped into the boat and rode off. After he had gone a long way, he saw a chimney made of rock crystal jutting out of the water. That's pretty cool. And there was a pleasant smell rising up from it. Reynold rode toward it and was convinced that his sister was living down below. So he climbed on top of the chimney and slid down. He's going underwater now, right? The princess was greatly startled when she suddenly saw a pair of wriggling legs, followed shortly by a whole man who identified himself as her brother. Okay, so it's a rock crystal, it's a chimney. So I guess we are supposed to believe that this is a this is like an enclosure underwater they're not underwater this is like a house that's like watertight i guess and then there's a chimney going up to above the surface and so he's jumping down the chimney into this like underwater cave essentially but like underwater house Presumably she's not, like, you know, living in water and has, like, gills now or something. Um, okay. Legs followed by... She was startled when she suddenly saw a pair of wriggling legs followed shortly by a whole man who identified himself as her brother. She rejoiced with all her heart, but then she turned sad and said, The whale has heard that you've wanted to visit me, and he's declared that if you come while he's a whale, he'll not be able to control his desire to eat you up. Moreover, he'll break my crystal house. <laughs> and I'll also perish in the flood of water. Yikes. This is a dicey situation. Get out of there, man. Can't you hide me until the time comes when the magic loses its power? She answered, Oh no, how can I do that? Don't you see that the walls are all made out of crystal and you can see through them? Okay, this is a pretty cool place to live, though, for her, right? She's got, like, a cool crystal underwater house that she can live at. Sounds dope as hell. But, yeah, I like how she's like, Nah, idiot, can't you see this is clear? You can see you. Everything that's underwater can see us right now, bro. Reynold the Wonder Child. Yeah, I heard that you were calling yourself Reynold the Wonder Child. Maybe cool it and we'll get along better, brother. <laughs> uh, but he's definitely expecting the same type of situation. He's like, hey, just hide me like everyone else. We continue. Nevertheless, she thought and thought. And finally, she remembered the room where the wood was kept. Why can't she just be like, come back at this time? Like, just leave now. There's a boat still up there. Just come back. Don't be here now. This is when he turns back. You don't have to worry about me hiding you and risking me dying. Both of us dying. Just come back. But no. Got to figure out a way to hide him. Let's see what they do. She finally remembered the room where the wood was kept. She arranged the wood in such a careful way 
that nobody could see anything from the outside, and it was there that she hid the Wonder Child. Alright, I'm real over this Wonder Child nonsense. He is not a Wonder Child. He has done nothing exceptional. He has shown no ability. He was just born to an old, to like when his mom was old, I guess, even though it's not made clear how old she actually was. We don't even get ages for the daughters. We just get oldest, second, and youngest. They could have been pretty young, so this mom could have had him when like she was pretty young as well. And I don't know why we're calling this kid Wonder Child. Miracle Child, at least like if she was super old and had a baby, like okay, Miracle Child. But Wonder Child implies that he himself is like super great and awesome. <laughs> like that's like, look at me, I'm brilliant. No, bro. You're just wandering around. The story has like kind of called you out and just been like, yeah, he's wandering around aimlessly, not doing much. No, quote, not accomplishing anything. <laughs> well, we continue. All right, so they she figured out a way to hide him in a bunch of wood. Soon after, the whale came. And the princess trembled like an aspen leaf. He swam around the crystal house a few times. And when he saw a little piece of Reynolds clothing sticking out of the wood, he beat his tail, snorted ferociously. And if he had seen more, he surely would have destroyed the house. He came once a day and swam around it until the magic stopped in the seventh month. They saw him, though. He saw a piece of his clothing sticking out. And so he knows he's there. He sees his clothes. Obviously, it's not like a, like a, does he just think it's like a scrap? Like, he's gone now. But, but he left a little bit of his clothing. No, he saw him. So it's over, right? Accor according to the logic of what she said, this should be over. But all right, in any event, he came once a day, swam around it till the magic stopped in the seventh month. So I guess he only had to hide once when when the guy came, and otherwise they're just like kicking it in cool underwater crystal house. So that was pretty dope. Suddenly, Reynold found himself in a castle right in the middle of an island. Awesome. And the castle surpassed even the splendor of the eagle's castle. I guess this is sort of going by the philosophy of like, the longer you wait, the better your stuff, like, the bigger reward you get. Now, he lived with his sister and brother-in-law for a whole month in the lap of luxury. I do like that the time periods are equivalent. You just have to wait longer, but you also get longer. This still, still, I think, actually, you know what? I don't know about a crystal house underwater sounds pretty cool, but like it doesn't say anything about her having like fish kids or anything like that. Like bear kids having a bunch of bear kids, like or a pair of bear kids to play around with. It's still pretty fun. It's pretty cool. I like that. I mean, this, this show is called shadow bear story session. So maybe I'm partial, maybe I'm biased towards the bear underwater crystal castle or even just house. Sounds pretty cool at the same time. I don't know. They don't, we don't really get a good description of what else is going on down there. But presumably, that's beautiful. You're looking out. You're underneath a giant lake and can see all these like fish around. That's pretty cool. I want to see that. I want to see what that's like. But I also would not want to have to wait six months for ball out dope times hashtag ball out dope times i feel like i still like the once a week but again if crystal underwater house is super dope maybe that tips the scales we uh it's a question for you which one of these situations do you want do you want cool eagles castle once every uh once a week or not once a week for a week after uh Waiting six weeks, do you want once a day with bear cubs and uh, forest servants 
uh, four servants, that seems to be only a bear thing, which is pretty cool. Um, they all have servants, actually. So, never mind. Scratch that. You get servants either way. But yeah, question. Answer in the comments. Do you want once a week ball out dope times? Do you want a whole week once every six weeks ball out dope times? Or do you want a whole month after six months ball out dope times? Answer in the comments. We continue. So she's got this castle. Suddenly, Reynald found himself in a castle right in the middle of an island, and the castle surpassed even the splendor of the eagle's nest. Now, he lived with his sister and brother-in-law for a whole month in the lap of luxury. When the time was over, the whale gave him three scales and said, When you're in trouble, rub them, and I'll come to your aid. Will he, though? Because he's a whale. So, the areas in which he can come to his aid, more limited than, uh, than the other ones. More circumstantial is uh, when he would be useful. The whale brought him to the bank, where his armor was still lying on the ground. The wonder child, I still hate this wonder child nonsense, moved around in the wilderness for seven more days. He moved around. So again, wandering around, not accomplishing anything. And he slept seven nights under the open skies. Then he caught sight of a castle with a steel gate that had a mighty lock on it. In front of the gate was a black bull with flashing eyes. Okay, this is getting interesting. It was guarding the entrance, and Reynald attacked it. Why do you attack it? It ain't doing nothing to you. Chill out, wonder child. He gave the bull a powerful blow on its neck, but the neck was made of steel, and the sword broke as if it were glass. Good. Why are you attacking it? He tried to use his lance, but it broke like a piece of straw. Then the bull grabbed him with its horns and threw him into the air so that he got caught in the branches of a tree. In his desperation, Reynald remembered the three bear's hairs and rubbed them in his hand. If you're in a tree, like, isn't that, does that feel like it should be a time for the, like, bird, right? Whatever. He sees, yeah, okay, so rubbed the bear's hairs. All at once, the bear appeared and fought with a bull. He tore the bull to pieces, but a bird came out of the bull's stomach, flew high into the air, and rushed off. But Reynold rubbed the three eagle's feathers, and suddenly a mighty eagle came flying through the air and pursued the bird, which flew directly toward a pond. Well, okay, the, it says the bird rushed off. Why are you now enlisting the help of the eagle? You did it. You beat, you tore the bull to pieces. We don't know why. We don't know why you felt this was necessary, Reynold Wonderchild, but you like, just like needed to destroy this bull. So congratulations. You got it torn to pieces. Now there's a bird flying away. Why do you also feel the need to destroy that? Reynold, the dickhead child. All right, so this bird is now being pursued by his eagle friend, uh, and the bird is flying directly toward a pond. The eagle dived at the bird and mangled it. Again, brutal and seemingly unnecessary. But Reynold saw the bird drop a golden egg into the water. Now he rubbed the three fish scales in his hand, and immediately... A whale came up. Why is he like, I need to destroy this thing every last shred? What is your problem, Reynolds? Immediately a whale came up, swallowed the egg, and spat it out onto the shore. Reynolds picked it up and cracked it open with a stone. There he found a little key that fit the steel gate. Ugh, all right. As soon as he touched the gate with the key, the gate sprang open by itself, and he entered. All the bars on the other doors slid off by themselves, and he went through seven doors into seven splendid and brightly lit rooms. In the last room, a maiden was lying asleep on the on a bed. This is weird, man. This is real weird. I don't like that he's doing this. I don't like that he's here. I don't like that there's a, just a random lady asleep here. Also, he's 16, so leave her alone, child. Leave her alone. Ugh. 
She was so beautiful that he was completely dazzled by her. He sought to wake her, but it was in vain. Her sleep was so deep that she seemed to be dead. In his rage, he struck a black slate standing next to the bed. That's weird. He's all like mad about it. That she's like, oh, this girl I like is asleep. You suck, Reynolds. You suck. Uh. So he struck a black slate standing next to the bed. At that very moment, the maiden awoke, but fell right back to sleep. What? What? Okay. Now, he took the slate and threw it onto the stone floor so that it shattered into a thousand pieces. Yo, chill, Reynold. What is your problem? Why are you here? You killed the bull, who at this point I can only assume is protecting this lady, and now you like are mad that this girl is like asleep and not talking to you? Chill, Reynold. Calm down. Jeez. No sooner did this happen, he shattered the slate on the stone floor, then the maiden opened her eyes wide, and the magic spell was broken. Whatever. We didn't even know it was a magic spell. She turned out to be the sister of Reynolds' three brothers-in-law. They're all related? That's the story. Oh my god, that is so much more interesting of a story than this idiot. What? I want to hear about this family where the three brothers each got turned into three different giant, crazy, powerful animals, all of which have an insane bloodlust when they're animals. And then the sister who's just like, you're going to be asleep now. That's the story, man. What are we doing here? I hate Reynolds so much. This kid sucks. <laughs> all right. So she turned out to be the sister of Reynolds' three brothers-in-law. It makes it kind of weird that they're all marrying each other, though. Also, if they're like all part of just two families, I don't know. Then they're, yeah, they're like cousin, their kids are, I, anyway, I'm not getting into that because their kids are then like also cousins. But actually, no, it's fine. I don't know. I'm confused. This is a very tangled web here. I don't know. Because, all right, here we go. So she is the sister of Reynolds' three brothers in law because she had rejected the love of a godless sorcerer, he had sentenced her to death-like sleep and changed her brothers into animals. They were to remain that way so long as the black slate remained untouched. Well, isn't that convenient? He was so enraged that sleepy lady wasn't talking to him that he destroyed the slate. It was his just infantile rage that led him to solve this problem. <laughs> uh, Reynold led the maiden out of the castle, and as they passed through the gate, his brothers-in-law came riding up from three different directions. They had been released from the magic spell, and with them came their wives and children. Indeed, the eagle's bride had hatched the egg <laughs> and carried a beautiful baby girl in her arms. Now all of them traveled to the old king and queen, who, I guess, that's, they're fine now, I guess. The miracle child, no, I refuse to call him that. Reynold the idiot is what we will call him. Reynold the idiot brought his three sisters home. Soon he married the beautiful maiden, just to complete this whole, like, your family marrying my family thing. And their wedding provided great joy and pleasure to everyone. Now the cats run home, for my tale is done. The end. Is that a thing? For the cats run home? Now the cats run home, for my tale is done? I haven't heard that before. Jesus. All right. Okay. Um, man. My God. This is the longest, by far the longest story I've done. I'm looking at 79 minutes here. Yeah, this is a doozy. Um, Reynold, I'm not impressed. He solved his problems purely by accident. 
He wandered around aimlessly. His sisters hid him from hid him. Sound like I said hit. His sisters hid him from their monster boyfriends, and he threw them risking their own danger. I guess that was just the last one. But because of them, he survived and then failed at killing the bull. Uh, But because the brothers all came, they could destroy it. Which begs the question, why couldn't the brothers just do that? on their own the bear tore the bull to shreds okay the bear tore the bull to shreds and then the eagle mauled the bird and then the whale destroyed the egg so not even destroyed it just swallowed it so the whale might not have even ultimately been necessary if um yeah, the whale might not have even been necessary if the egg had fallen literally anywhere else. So, sounds like the three brothers who were transformed could have easily solved this problem on their own pretty much at any time. Did they not know about the bull in the castle? Because if they did, obviously they should have just done that. If they didn't, it still doesn't really made me like or be impressed by Reynolds at all because he was just stumbling through life. That's one thing that is frustrating about folktales. A lot of problems that are solved happen through no intention, but purely through happenstance and luck. So, just kind of worked out. So in terms of lessons to take from this one, I mean, don't gamble. Gambling is dangerous. That's that's definitely you lose your kingdom again and again and again with gambling. But then again, it kind of muddies that message because only through all of these daughters being given away are you know the princes ultimately then saved. Um so mixed message there. Uh yeah, again, not a whole lot of lessons to draw from this one. Uh, be nice to your family and like look out for each other. We're, we're stronger together kind of thing. If you're any of these daughters, they weren't being held where they were. They could have gone like bear daughter and eagle daughter. They probably could have like gone home if they'd wanted to. They were very happy with their lives. Their father, as they remember him, was a monster and a horrible person and only ever led to suffering in their lives. So it even says, it explicitly said it with the the bear daughter. I don't remember if it explicitly said it with the other daughters. But the bear daughter was very happy. It said she was content with her life. I don't know that she wants to go back to... I mean, if it just made them... If it just made all of their castles that they like normally had, or not normally had, the castles that they got for their allotted periodical time periods, you know, the once a week, once every six weeks, and once every six, seven months. Um, if it just made that permanent, okay, cool, great. Now we're just ball out dope times all the time. I mean, that's great and good for them. Um but if the, all that stuff just like disappeared and they're going back to live with gambling king and sad queen, understandably, I'm sad queen. It's very, my heart goes out to sad queen as it does to a lot of <laughs> queens and, and mothers in folktales. They have a hard time of it. Um, but yeah, if they're just going back to live with him, not that great, not that nice. It'd be cool to, just, you know, still have your forest castles and, and uh, animal servants. That sounds awesome. Um, but yeah. And I would still want underwater crystal house to at least be able to, like, visit there. It's like summer home, you know? That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. But yeah, this one's crazy. I do I actually, 
ultimately, end of the day, I do like this one. There's a lot more. I mean, it's so long. There's a lot more going on here than a lot of them. And so you flesh out these characters a lot more. Um, I mean, they don't really give personalities to the daughters, which is unfortunate. It's a common thing with female characters here. The queen gets a little bit of a personality. Um, not a great one, not a whole lot. They don't flesh it out. They're just like when her daughters were gone, she was sad and that she had a son and she was happy again. So she's just like mom, I guess. They just make her character mom. So you don't really get a personality there. The king, we get the most personality from. Gambling addict. Uh, horrible judgment. Very uh, insensitive. Doesn't care about his uh, relatives. Or he does, but like quickly gets over it once he's able to gamble again. Uh, just a monster. Just a monster of a man. Just a horrible person. Uh, Reynold. The idiot. We don't really get a personality with him. He's just like, seems to mean well, but not really be good at anything <laughs> you know but hey sometimes you just need someone with some initiative to head out blindly into the dark unknowing forest with good intentions and sometimes that that's what you need and it'll work out because if, if you if you're there you go that's what that's the lesson that i'm gonna take even if you don't have any idea how you're going to solve a problem, or even if you don't even really have any skills or are good at anything. If you got a good heart and you mean well and you dive into that dark magic forest that is life, you just might save the world. No, it's too cliche. You just might make it work. You just might find your happiness. There we go. That's it. That's going to do it. And yeah, I'm not going to adapt this one. This one is, uh, yeah, this one, I mean, it's also already twice the length of, of most of uh, most of these podcasts, but yeah, that's I'm very ha I'm very satisfied ending on that note, and uh, it was nice, good story. All right, come on back next time for the poor maiden. Super generic name that is like so many of these stories could be called the poor maiden. A lot of them involve a poor maiden. I mean, this story had three poor maidens, the three daughters and the poor maiden who was asleep all the time. But uh, coming back next next time for uh, the, uh, the singular, the one and only, the Omega poor maiden. See you next time.